Hello, and welcome to Off Grid Solid. My name is Joe, and I bought five acres of raw land in the high deserts of Arizona, and I am building an off grid homestead. I'm in the process of building a home for myself. And of course, I did a lot of research on building techniques. Now I'm going to have to build this house single handedly. So I want to make sure the construction techniques that I choose don't end up putting me in the hospital. <laughs> Living here in the Southwest, I have the perfect soil for adobe. Here's some soil I just tossed into a bucket. I didn't sift it or mix it or do anything with it. I just put it in the bucket and forgot about it. And as you can see, it turned into a pretty nice brick. And earth bag construction is very popular. So I looked into that pretty closely. But in the end, I decided against it. As I was doing my research, of course there were pros and cons to everything. But it was much easier to find the pros instead of the cons. So I thought I would make a video to list all the drawbacks to earth bag construction and put them in one place to help you guys out. I'm not really trying to talk you out of anything. Earth bag construction is a good technique. I just want everyone to know what they're getting into. By weighing all the pros and all the cons, you make a good decision that you can be happy with in the end. People have been building with earth since the very beginning. And adobe construction is still being used today. But adobe bricks need to be dried fully before they're strong enough to build with. This can take a long time. So earth bags were developed. By putting the adobe in a sandbag, the earth can dry in the wall and it doesn't slow down construction. Sandbags have been used for a very long time for flood control or by the military to build bunkers. You can throw anything in there just to give them some weight, but by using some properly mixed adobe, you can build a strong structure. Next, they invented super adobe. This is similar to earth bags, except instead of individual bags, it uses one long tube. This makes transportation of the bags easier. They can be carried in one big roll instead of a pile of bags. Also, it lends itself well to building domes. <clears throat> They developed this to help refugees and displaced people build quick structures in barren settings. And NASA actually had some interest for structures on the moon or Mars. But the polypropylene bags or tubes are very slippery. So they need something to keep them together. Most commonly, a layer of barbed wire is sandwiched between each layer <clears throat> and also Many people have difficulty getting stucco or lime plaster to stick to those slippery bags. So they developed hyper adobe. Hyper adobe are tubes, but it uses mesh instead of woven polypropylene. This mesh is a lot like bags you can see in the produce department, most commonly onion bags. And when that's filled with adobe, the soil squishes through the holes in the net a little bit and attaches to the other rows or gives a rougher surface for stucco or plaster to stick to. And this solves some of the drawbacks to super adobe or earth bag. Of course, people who do build with earth bag and hyper and super adobe, they do mention the drawbacks. They're not hiding anything, but I have to dig through a lot of information to find them. So here they are all in one place. The first and biggest drawback is the sheer amount of work it takes to build this. It's easy to get a false sense of security. I thought, well, building any house is a lot of work. A stick construction with two by fours and plywood sure would be a lot of work to do single-handedly. But building with earth is a lot more work than that. You'll feel like you're being punished. It's chain gang level of hard work. <laughs> it's moving tons and tons of soil multiple times. There's digging, sifting, lifting to fill the bags, and then lifting the bags onto the wall, and finally tamping them into place. And even with the help of heavy machinery, it's going to be a lot of work. And if you're going to bring in heavy machinery, think how easy traditional construction will be with heavy machinery. You'll be done in a weekend. <laughs> the second hidden drawback is that 
these buildings fall down a lot. We don't see it that much. If somebody is making a YouTube video about Earthbag and it falls down, they usually just stop making the video. It takes a really brave person to show their failures like that. It's just soil. It has a lot of compressive strength. Straight up and down, it can support a lot of weight, but it can be pulled apart pretty easily. And it's not very strong at all with sideways loads. Hiya. And that's why most people build in buttresses or you build in a curved arc instead of a straight wall. Another drawback is that if the adobe gets wet, it will lose all structure and your walls will tumble down. So a protective coating is necessary, stucco or some sort of a lime plaster. Be very careful building in a floodplain. If there's a flood, I don't think a layer of stucco is gonna save you. Some solve this problem by mixing in a little bit of cement. But if you're at around 10% or 12% cement, that's already got concrete. You might as well build a concrete wall and use easier techniques than the earth bag, like pouring into forms. The low cost of earth bag construction is mentioned a lot, but is it really as cheap as it sounds? Looking around right now, the cheapest I can find bags for is around 40 cents a bag. A simple 500 square foot round home with the walls being about eight feet tall, will use around 770 bags. So that's around $310 just for the bags. <clears throat> and that's about how much the two by fours would cost to build that same size home with the stick construction method. Now I know two by fours alone don't make a wall, but earth bag needs more than just the bags and soil. There's the barbed wire and the stucco and plaster. The costs between the two are not that far off. Traditional construction might be a little bit more expensive, but it's one-tenth the work. So it might be a better bet depending on your situation. Earth walls don't have any insulation. You can watch my other video about thermal mass. So these earth walls are going to be cold in the winter and warm in the summer. Insulation can always be added, but curved walls with buttresses will make it very difficult to put on insulation. I think you might need some sort of a spray foam, which is pretty expensive. Another complication is that it's very difficult to attach to these walls. I've mentioned that it's difficult to get plaster to stick to the slippery polypropylene, but it's also difficult to get a screw or a lag to hold onto this earth. The adobe hardens, but not like concrete. Some of these lags and shields that you use for concrete won't hold very well in this soil and it'll fall out with any weight put on it. To solve the problem, people will build wooden cleats into their walls and this will give you an attachment point and that will work. But it's usually just a few cleats here and there for electrical boxes. But attaching lath for stucco every few feet is not really practical. And you have to be careful with the uplift on a roof. An earth bag wall can support a lot of downward weight, but it doesn't have much strength in the upward direction. They usually put in some sort of a hurricane strapping. This adds a little bit more work and a little bit more money. So it's important to include that in our calculations. As we can see, there are workarounds for each and every one of these drawbacks. At what point do we say, this is just too complicated, too much work. I'd rather just use two by fours and a few nails. I like building with earth. I like the look. I like the idea of it. I gave it some serious consideration, but for me, building single-handedly, it just didn't seem worth it. But everybody has a different situation. So look over these drawbacks and make an informed decision for yourself. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video was informative and not too discouraging. <laughs> if you found this info useful, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. On my next video, I'm gonna try out something a little different and be a little bit more philosophical. Let's find out how that goes, and I'll see you in the next video.